paint. That's a perfectly serviceable, if not particularly pretty, um, owl specimen. One leg. Okay, I will. I may primp this a little more later, and in fact, tomorrow I will uh, take it off the board, rearrange it, make sure everything's drying correctly, and, and repin it once it's had a day to settle. Okay, set the skin aside. Uh, I'll put a label with that in a moment, and pull back up the uh, partial scale and finish it. We've sexed the bird, we've taken tissues. What we need to do now is to remove the bulk of the meat and allow the, this partial skeleton to dry. One thing we haven't done yet is take a look at the stomach contents. I pulled the stomach out, I had pulled it out of the way when we sexed the bird, cutting it open from the side, opening it up to have a look. It died with a full stomach and it looks like it was eating a bird, a passerine. There's a bird foot in there. We save uh, stomach contents in this collection. Um, actually, I can see the bill of that bird there and uh, the foot here. There's the other foot. It's small, it's a small passerine. Um, my guess is that it's probably something like a kinglet. It may, in fact, have been another a fellow roadkill prior to um, this owl's own death. It's hard to say. But we'll put this material into a stomach content vial and fill it with alcohol. Who would have guessed two bird specimens for one? item there that bird would be identifiable using uh, DNA or washing up the feathers and comparing their shape and color and length to specimens in the uh, collection. I'll label that also in a moment. We've removed the stomach. We need to remove more, more of, the, of the meat. We've again sexed the bird so that we can go into the interior and just tear out all of the uh, organs and uh, lung is important to get out. What we do is feed the partial skeletons, once the meat is dried, to dermestid beetles on dried meat. The larvae live on dried meat. They don't like blood and, and they don't like rotten meat. So we want to get this fairly clean so it dries up as basically a decent quality beef jerky for uh, the dermestid beetles. I use my scalpel to strip away the largest chunks of meat. breast, leg, in a moment we'll go with the, with back to the wing bones that we took out earlier. Cleans up fairly quickly. Uh, again, the, the beetles do the hard work here. What we want to do is simply give them good quality meat and yet make them work for their living uh, and get these bones clean. We don't want to give them large free chunks of dinner. Owl eyes, all bird eyes, have uh, bones in them called sclerotic rings. Owl eyes are the most developed of these. Those, because there are bones in them, we keep the eyes with the skeleton, but we need to remove them from the skull. Owl eyes are large bony objects. There's a lot of fluid in an eyeball. Once we get it out, we pop it, take the meat out, or take the juice out, and we put it into the body cavity where it, we, it will stay with the carcass as it dries and as it is cleaned up by the beetles. Okay, those are two eyeballs done. Wing bones, remove the meat from the humerus, from between the radius and ulna. And you can see I'm just removing large chunks not working assiduously to clean it myself because after all that's why we have these beetles. 
get the large chunks off and let the beetles do the rest. I do need to strip down this foot skin to allow those beetle larvae to have access to the toes so that uh, the beetle processing goes quickly. This is the case with uh, uh, all birds. We need to remove quite a bit of the skin. This owl you'll see is feathered down to its toes. Most birds are not. In those cases what we'll do is cut open the scales and the skin and the scales to, to give the birds access to that foot. This is actually quite freeze-dried so I'm not going to trouble with it at the moment. And the last wing, this is the left wing. You'll recall we broke the radius and ulna. Just stripping off the large muscle groups and not uh, spending much time. Okay, you'll notice I've stuck all the loose pieces into the um, cap body cavity. I'm going to pull the cotton out of the throat now. That kept the fluid from coming out, uh, internal fluids from coming out onto the head plumage and neck plumage. And now that's a partial skeleton ready to be wrapped up and then dried, labeled and dried. I just uh, take a little bit of cotton thread and uh, lightly wrap this to keep all of the pieces together. Then again, we'll just label this up, air dry it, and if you're in a location where mold is a problem or drying is slow, you can speed that process by uh, giving it a soak for a day or so in ethanol, and then drying it the rest of the way. Ethanol soaking will speed that uh, drying process. That's a partial skeleton. Once we have it labeled, it'll go down to the dermestis like that. And it's just that easy.